uh, welcome students in the last class we have discussed a few concepts of bacterial diseases as well as viral diseases in detail now in this session we shall continue with the chapter with much more concepts of diseases and health aspects now next concept is the protozoan diseases protozoa is another category of the pathogens which carry certain diseases to the human kind some of the protozoan diseases are amebiosis amoebic dysentery are also called as amoebiosis another is ciliary dysentery giardiasis malaria african sleeping sickness commonly known as sleeping sickness and kala hazar these are the some of the common protozoan diseases these are the species of the protozoa which causes a few diseases what i mentioned now entamoeba histolytica is the pathogen which is going to cause the disease amoebic dysentery trypanosoma is another important species of protozoa which causes the disease sleeping sickness leishmania donovani is another protozoan species which causes the disease kala hazar trichomonas vaginalis which is going to cause a disease as ciliary dysentery giardia is going to cause a disease as giardiasis plasmodium vivax is responsible for malaria so these are the few species of the protozoa which cause certain protozoan diseases now other important diseases of the protozoa and we can see here the organs which are going to be affected when such diseases are going to be caused and what is the vector responsible for such diseases if you look into the amoebiosis as we know it caused by an entamoeba histolytica and when that particular disease is affected the organ which is being affected in the body is intestine and the liver and it is caused through the contaminated water sleeping sickness is caused by trypanosoma and organs affected is the blood and the brain and the vector is set say flies through the set say flies the sleeping sickness is going to be caused leishmaniasis is also referred as kala hazar is uh, going to cause by an agent called leishmania donovani and the organs affected here is the white blood cells skin and the intestine and here also the vector is the sand fly malaria obviously we know that this, this one this is caused by the plasmodium and this organs affected for this one is the liver red blood cells and through female anopheles mosquito another important disease of protozoa is babesiosis which is going to cause by an agent called babesia microti and it is going to affect it to the red blood cells through the ticks next another category of the diseases is the helminthes helminthes is also responsible for causing the diseases to the human some of the helminthal diseases are ascariasis filariasis also referred as elephantiasis tineasis and fasciuriasis ascariasis is caused by an agent called ascaris lumbricoides through contaminated soil and the symptoms are intestinal infection filariasis is also referred as elephantiasis caused by an agent called ucheria bankrupti and this is caused through the culex mosquito and the main symptoms appearing in this disease is the swelling of the lymph nodes tineasis is caused by tinea solium and through the undercooked pork undercooked pork or raw vegetables and here the main symptom is it causes the blindness Fasciriosis is actually caused by a organism called fasciola hepatica commonly known as liver fluke and it is going to cause through the infected materials and it is going to affect the liver and liver infection is going to be caused in this particular diseases Next some of the fungal diseases we can look into here some fungal diseases in plants as we know fungus is responsible for causing both for plants as well as for animals even for other organisms for that matter virus bacteria not only for human beings it also causes the diseases for plants but we look into the fungus the major diseases in the plants is by fungus only so we shall look into the diseases of the fungal disease in plants uh, some of the diseases mentioned here are wilt of cotton which is caused by the fusarium oxysporum Tica disease of groundnut is caused by the Cercospora personata. Red rot of sugarcane is caused by the Colletotrichum falcatum. These are the plant disease caused by the fungus. Look into the disease in case of human beings. Ringworm, which is caused by a species called Epidermophyton. Again, another ringworm, which is caused by there are two species responsible for the ringworm, and Candidiasis, responsible for the human kind fungal disease. by candida albicans these are all the fungal species that cause these diseases now these are all some of the images which tells you 
when that particular disease is, is going to be affected or what actually symptoms are going to be seen on the body. If you just look into the bacterial diseases, normally in the bacterial disease, if you just look into the body, you can see the skin infections. I am showing certain uh, pictures which show certain symptoms here. The first image will tell you about the bacterial skin infection, if it is appears, how it is going to be caused on the surface of the skin. Then viral infection. Viral infection, I have shown two photos. One is the viral fever, which is the child is, uh, the thermometer is inserting in the mouth of a child, which indicates that she is having a viral fever. Another one is viral infection, which appears in the form of red rashes. Then almost in all the symptoms, you can see these red rashes. Uh, protozoan infection, we can look into the uh, picture here, what happens when the protozoan is going to be affected. Then another important protozoa, which is entered in the body of the skin, we can see that also here. Then helminthal infection, the second image which you are going to see in the picture is helminthal infection where we can see the elephantiasis as I mentioned or filariasis which is caused by the Ocheria bankrupti which results in the swelling of the lymph nodes. In Canada we call them as Anekal Roga. So that is what you are going to see in the second image of this one. Then if you look into the fungal infection, of course the fungus is also uh, creating certain infection in the body and also the, the best example for the fungal skin infection is the psoriasis what you are going to see in the image. So these are all some of the photos which tells you the symptoms of certain diseases. Now let us look into the means of this spreading of these diseases. How actually the disease are being spread from a healthy person to a uh, diseased person. Uh, that is through two important ways. One is called as a direct transmission, another one is called as the indirect transmission. So as the name indicate, direct transmission here, it doesn't involve any agent to pass the disease to a healthy person. It involves contact with the infected person which is called a sexual contact or contact with the soil or through the animal bites or by the transplantal transmission. By any of these means, the disease is going to be transmitted. We call that more as direct transmission process. Whereas in case of indirect transmission, there is an agent is going to be there. Through that, the disease is going to be spread to an healthy person. It involves what I say the vectors or through contaminated food, water and air. So these are all the agents through which the disease is going to be spread. We call that method as indirect transmission. Next, let us look into certain examples here which involves a direct transmission mode where I saw uh, sorry where I explain is that contact with infected person we can give examples like chicken pox smallpox ringworm AIDS syphilis gonorrhea all these are some of the diseases which are caused through infected person with soil I can give an example of tetanus through animal bites we can look into the rabies that is caused through the rabid dog or the monkey even through monkey also the rabies is going to be caused Transplacental transmission which involves the AIDS, German measles, syphilis, etc. For indirect transmission, as I mentioned already, it involves vectors, uncontaminated food and water, air and even the formite bone. Uh, for that, we can give an example here. As we know, what is the meaning of vectors? Vectors are nothing but the animals which carry the pathogens. So, they are also referred as what we call carriers. Some of the examples are uh, carriers. Uh, which uh, includes housefly, which causes the cholera, dysentery, typhoid, diarrhea. All these diseases are being caused through the houseflies and these are referred as what we call the carriers. Vectors, normally we say female mosquitoes which cause the disease malaria, filaria, dengue, chikungunya, etc. Contaminated food and water which uh, includes cholera, hepatitis B, diarrhea, ascariasis, etc. From air, the examples are common cold, pneumonia, tuberculosis, even corona is also caused through the contaminated, uh, so through the air, what we can see the present scenario. Formite bond means whenever the articles comes in contact with the patient, we can have a disease. Again, we can give a today's pandemic situation, that is the corona is an excellent example we can give for this formite bone diseases. Now, this particular slide will tell you about whenever a disease is being caused which organ is going to be affected? Uh, we can look into this. This is what we call organ specific manifestation, which includes which organ is going to be affected for so and so diseases. Let's look into that particular thing here. Uh, when tuberculosis pneumonia is caused, the target organ, the organ which is going to be affected for this disease is lungs. Typhoid, diarrhea, helminthic infection, the digestive tract is a target organ. Jaundice, again liver 
plasmodium again it is liver then japanese encephalitis that is commonly called as the brain fever that is also uh, as the name indicate the target organ is the brain so one small correction you have to do here is plasmodium it is not actually the name of the disease it is the organism name which is going to cause the disease malaria when malaria is going to be affected the target organ is liver then elephantiasis again it is caused uh, to the organ is lymphatic vessels aids again the lymph nodes are going to be affected here again when such target organ is being affected let us look into what are the symptoms which are going to be seen in the persons if the brain is the target organ then the symptoms includes are severe headache vomiting fits or unconsciousness if any one of these symptoms are going to be seen then we say that the organ which is going to be affected is the brain in the same manner cough breathlessness lungs is a target organ if it is a lungs is a target organ the symptoms are cough and breathlessness if the liver is affected the symptoms may be the jaundice if lymph nodes are the target organ then we can see the lymphocytes production may go down if the elementary canal is a target organ then we see the loss of appetite abdominal pain etc so depending upon the organ which disease is going to be affected based on that we can identify the symptoms in this particular case now then after knowing all these uh, symptoms and diseases and everything the next thing comes to your mind is that treatment how to go for the treatment of this particular diseases for that especially to go with the uh, to treat especially for the infectious diseases the several methods are there one is reduce the effect of the disease how to go for that and second is symptomatic treatment depending upon the type of symptoms we have to give a proper medication for that particular thing so this is also another way of going for treatment process so reduce the effect of disease means how to go for this this is carried out by methods like symptomatic treatment and rest how to go for uh, reducing the effect means we have to give either symptomatic treatment or either we have to make the patient to go complete rest complete rest means he has to take certain days duration for bed rest so symptomatic treatment means medicines are taken to treat the symptoms of the diseases so depending upon the symptoms the doctors will prescribe the tablets which include certain uh, composition say for example if the symptoms are fever then the medicines includes antipyretic if the symptoms includes reduce pain in order to reduce the pain or pain uh, killers what we say in general which includes analgesic if we, if you want to control the motions the doctors will prescribe the tablets which contains anti diarrheal and if you want to control the sneezing and coughing then they will go for anti allergic drugs so these are the medicines they give depending upon the treatment so that they can cure those symptoms so if symptoms are been cured so obviously the disease is going to be cured this is one way of reducing the effect of disease another way is the rest rest in a sense bed rest so how this bed rest helps means the bed rest is advised to conserve the energy for making the same available for healing so how long we take the rest how much uh, time we take the rest that makes our body to be in a healthy condition and also makes if any wounds or anything is happens that healing is also takes place in a very quick manner you know, depending upon how we take the bed rest now another important uh, principle of treating ment of the disease is the killing of infectious agents so how to control how to make this particular process so infectious agents can be killed by using a uh, substances or drugs which are called as antibiotics infectious agents have some essential biochemical life process which are peculiar to their group and not shared with the other groups so for this purpose we have to use the drugs which can block these processes that is biochemical processes and they can kill the infectious agents such drugs are preferred as antibiotics so antibiotics are the drugs which can block the biochemical life process of bacteria without harming the human cells see children here antibiotics are given for the bacterial diseases some of the antibiotics are penicillin so when you take the penicillin containing antibiotic so it can prevent the cell wall synthesis in bacteria if you take antibiotics which contain sulfa then it prevents the folic acid synthesis in bacteria if we take erythromycin and streptomycin it inhibits the ribosome function if we take ciprofloxacin uh, it inhibits dna replication however antibiotics are not effective against the viruses 
because viruses do not use the metabolic pathways of bacteria. So viruses pathway is different from the bacterial pathway. So antibiotics never plays an important role in treating the diseases of viruses. Now, how to go for the prevention then? Now, so far we have discussed about the treatment. Now we shall go for the prevention. So they can be done in two ways. One is the public health measure. Another one is personal health measure. Public health measures includes the prevention of overcrowding, sanitation and drinking water. Personal health measure includes nutrition, proper habits, exercise and relaxation. Proper habits means which includes clean food, clean water, clean air, freedom from addiction, personal hygiene, domestic hygiene and regularity. Relaxation means sleep is the best form of relaxation. Here, the sleep depends on the age of a person. Infants sleep for long hours, which is necessary for them to grow. For children, an average of 8 hours of sleep is sufficient. For adults like you, an average of 6 hours of sleep is enough. Relaxation provides a rest to the muscles and relieves the brain of tension and stress. Now, there are certain specific ways of preventing the infection. So one is what we can say the immunization, another one is what I can say is vaccination. Immunization means it is a method of developing the immunity. The property of strengthening the body's immune system to check the occurrence of microbial infection is called the immunity. So here what we are going to do is we have to improve the immunity of the body by giving certain treatment. So by giving certain specific way of treatment, we are preventing here infection. So that can be done through either vaccination or we can give through what actually vaccines. Almost immunization includes vaccination. So by providing vaccines or vaccination, we can prevent the infection. That is what in today's pandemic situation, the doctors are telling that our body's immune system has to be increased means so that we have to preventing the so that we have to make steps to prevent the infection. If we are avoiding the infection, then we can able to develop the immune system in a proper way. We can strengthen our body. So what is this vaccination actually? Vaccination is the most common method of preventing the infection of microorganisms, especially the bacteria and virus. How vaccination plays a very important role here or what actually the role of vaccination here? Let us look into that. In this, a vaccine which is referred as antigen is inoculated inside the body to stimulate the formation of antibodies by the immune system. Now this vaccine, whatever we have introduced, mimics the microbe against which we want to develop the immunity. It produces antibodies which prevent any subsequent exposure to the infecting microbe from turning into the actual diseases. So that vaccine will act against that particular microbe, whatever it has been entered in our body and prevent the further infection that is not to be happened in the body. Example, diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, and influenza type B. For all these diseases, the vaccination is DPT hip vaccine. Tuberculosis, to prevent the infection of that, the vaccine name is BCG, which is known as Bacillus calmetregari. Then for polio, as we already know, that is polio drops is given to prevent the infection of polio. So with this, children, 9th standard biology syllabus is completed. From next class, we'll have revision and be ready with all your record books and we shall have a discussion with all the chapters, whatever I have discussed so far. So take care. Goodbye. Thank you.